Hey friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are going to be wrapping up a few projects that we started the other day together. We're going to start some new projects and we're going to make dinner. It's early afternoon. Josh and I ate breakfast early and we're kind of hungry. And I want to get dinner going so that we can have an early dinner and then relax for the rest of the evening. So in here, I am putting three quarts of broth in my electric pressure canner that's cold from the refrigerator. And then I filled my electric pressure canner with cold water. And I did not get to this when we were doing the canning projects the other day. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it right now because this is so easy to use this electric pressure canner. I don't even have to think. So we're gonna put it on a pressure can for 25 minutes. We're going to push start. It's going to warm the jars up and the water up at the same time. And now we have our first project going that we started the other day. The next thing I want to get going on is dinner. And we are going to make stroganoff. I bought all the ingredients, or I should say I just bought mushrooms the other day when we were doing that big bulk freezer cooking. But I did not thaw enough ground beef for making the stroganoff when we had that day and these mushrooms need to be eaten up. I already pre-washed them so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make a double batch of stroganoff for dinner tonight and then I'm going to go ahead and freeze the second batch so that we can have that in the freezer since I was planning to have that be a freezer meal. The other projects that we're going to get going on today are we are going to make desserts in a jar, we're going to do brownies in a jar, and we're going to make some cornbread in a jar. So for postpartum we have easy desserts that Josh can whip together if we want a dessert. Or if I want to make chili, I have cornbread mix already ready. And all that needs to be added are the wet ingredients. So I've never done anything in a jar before, so that's going to be a fun project. We're also, if we get to it, we're going to strain out that apple and pear brandy and vodka. So let's go ahead and come on in and let's get all these veggies prepped so that we can get dinner going. And while dinner's cooking, we're gonna do the projects in a jar. I like to cut my mushrooms really fine for stroganoff because I love the flavor of mushrooms, but I don't necessarily like to bite into a big chunk of mushroom. So I just chop them up nice and fine. You know what I should do before I finish chopping all these mushrooms is I really should get my onions caramelizing. So let me take a break from chopping the mushrooms and we're going to get the onions diced up pretty small and I'm going to get these cooking on the stove. I may be tripling this recipe because I chopped up a lot of onions for this. But I did thaw three pounds of meat, so that basically is a triple recipe. Which is okay because stroganoff is Josh's favorite dinner. So if I get two freezer meals and dinner tonight out of this, we're con we will consider that a win. I normally cook stroganoff with cold beef, meaning I usually make a roast first and then I take the leftover roast meat and I use that in the stroganoff, but I didn't make a roast, so we are going to use ground beef today. So I'm going to caramelize these onions very, very well. So I'm going to start with a good amount of butter and some olive oil in our cast iron. We're going to get these onions in here. And I only have enough sour cream for tonight's dinner in the fridge. So the sour cream I won't add to the stroganoff that's going in the freezer and I'll just make a note of that. But when you freeze sour cream in something like stroganoff, it freezes just fine. Now we're going to salt this to help draw out the moisture on these onions. This is going to take a good 15-20 minutes. That's why I want to get this going so we can do the cornbread in a jar and the brownies in a jar while we have dinner cooking and we're already in the kitchen. But I will go ahead first and get these mushrooms diced. And then I have some zucchinis that I got the other day that need to be eaten today. So we are going to have zucchini and summer squash for a vegetable for dinner tonight. And I think I might roast those in the oven just to do something a little bit different. I usually saute them on the stove, but I think we're going to switch it up just a little bit today. I also need to peel garlic, so I'm probably going to 
peel two heads of garlic for tonight for the stroganoff. Onions are starting to cook down, which is what we want, but we're going to cook these until they're browned. So apparently, when you are dicing or chopping garlic, to get the really, really, really good health benefits of garlic, you want to do it about 10 minutes before you're going to cook it, because there's two compounds in garlic that when mashed, there's an enzyme that reacts, and those two compounds come together and create something called allicin. And that's the compound that's really health promoting, but you have to have a little bit of time and you have to smash the garlic in order for that reaction to happen. So if you're going to use fresh garlic, it's good to get that chopped up first and let it sit. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Brad. He does a fermentation section on, well, I don't think he does it anymore on the channel Bon Appetit, but he talks about that all the time. And so whenever I cut fresh garlic, I, true, I do try to let it sit for just a minute. I'm getting my zucchini and summer squash all chopped up so we can set our cutting board aside and we can move on to a different project. All of our veggies ready for tonight's dinner. All right, we have the Cornbread, we're gonna put in three jars. I'm gonna do three recipes of cornbread. This is my mom's recipe. It's so good. It's a sweet cornbread though, so if you don't like sweet cornbread, you probably aren't gonna like this cornbread. And then we're gonna do the brownies. So let's go ahead and do the cornbread first, because I have all those ingredients out. The one thing I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna use in both of these recipes is my freeze-dried eggs. Because I'm not eating very many eggs for my chickens, and I could use this in substitute for the eggs, and then all I have to do is add water to this. I will leave these recipes down in the description box and how to put them in the jars and the directions for that. But I'm just trying to figure out if I wanna wait and use fresh eggs when I make these up, or if I want to use these freeze dried and then just have to reconstitute and write down how much water to add. I think I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and use the freeze dried eggs. But when I write the recipe down in the description box on how to do this, I will put how to use fresh eggs for this. So we're gonna start with the cornbread. So we've got three jars here and each one of these jars, we're gonna add two and one third cups of flour. I hope all this will fit in the jar. Next, we're gonna add one cup of sugar. We have a little bit of a problem. We have completely filled these jars already and we still have to add a few more ingredients. So I just grabbed out some half gallon jars and I'm gonna dump these right on top here and we'll put these in these half gallon jars. I'm gonna try to do it so we can keep the layers. I don't think we're gonna need to do this for the brownies, but I'll look at the ingredients and see how much we need to add. I could have done the math on it, I guess, before I got started, but I didn't. That's okay. So now we need to add one cup of cornmeal, four and a half teaspoons of baking powder, which is a tablespoon and a teaspoon and a half a teaspoon of salt, and six tablespoons of freeze-dried eggs, or you would use three eggs. But you would add the eggs when you go to mix up the actual recipe. So how I'm gonna make this really, really easy for whoever wants to whip up this cornbread is on this reused lid, this is just a canning lid that I had canned something else in, it looks like this was a hot sauce lid from 2021. I've washed it. I'm gonna put that we're gonna bake this at 400 degrees for 22 to 27 minutes in a 
9 by 13 baking dish. And then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients we need to add. So because we use freeze-dried eggs, we are going to add 6 tablespoons of water. Or if I didn't use the freeze-dried eggs, I would put 3 eggs on here. So I'm going to put 6 tablespoons of H2O. Then we're going to add 2 thirds cup melted butter. Or you could use oil if you wanted. And 1 and 2 thirds cup milk. You could even add powdered milk to this if you wanted to, and then just add the equivalent of water. But we usually have milk in the house, so I'm gonna put milk for these. Now I'm gonna put my lid with my directions on each one with the ring. And we have three future cornbreads ready to go. I could mix these up or I can leave them in layers. I think they're pretty in these nice layers. So let's get going on the brownies. I just had a thought, if you did not want to put this in a half gallon jar, you could cut this recipe in half and it would fit in a quart jar. And then instead of using, this makes a nine by 13 pan of cornbread, you could put it in a quart jar with a half recipe and it would make a nine by nine thing of cornbread. Because the brownie recipe that we're doing does make a nine by nine brownie and all of the ingredients should fit in a quart jar. So let's go ahead and get going on the brownie mix. For the brownies, we're gonna start with one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. We'll link these recipes down below. The next thing we're gonna add is our cocoa, and we are gonna add three-fourths plus two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. We're gonna add a half teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add two tablespoons, excuse me, four tablespoons of our freeze-dried eggs and a half cup of all-purpose flour. I had the thought you can buy freeze-dried and dried eggs on Amazon, so I will look for that for you. So if you're interested in making this and you don't have your own freeze dryer, you can just buy powdered eggs if this is something you'd be interested in making as well. I think it's kind of fun. And then we will write on the top just the same as we did before. We're gonna cook this at 325 degrees in an eight by eight baking dish for, um, let me look and see, I have to see how long we're supposed to bake this for, about 20 to 25 minutes. And then all we have to do is add the melted butter and our water and we're ready to go. Now, how beautiful are those? We have three cornbreads and three brownie mixes. In the time it took us to whip up those brownies and cornbread mixes, our canner is ready for the next step. It's been venting for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna close the vent and I'm gonna push start and it's gonna start the countdown to start actually canning this broth and I don't have to think about it, do anything about it. It is doing what it's going to do. Our onions have been caramelizing this whole time and we are ready to add the next ingredient. We are going to get our mushrooms into our saute pan and we're going to get these caramelizing just as much as we caramelize those onions and we'll add a little salt to the mushrooms. I went ahead and I took my freeze dried eggs and I put them into a smaller container because I need this half gallon jar for the next project we're gonna do. So I'm gonna wash these two jars, I have two half gallons here, and we're gonna get going on straining our apple brandy and vodka that we started, I don't even know, maybe two or three months ago. We are finally getting back to this project that we started a long time ago. And I did not label these jars, which is really, really silly. And I cannot taste any of this yet. So we're gonna have to use our nose in order to figure out which one is which. So I know that we have two apple and two pear. So these are the apple and these are the pear. I'm gonna use these nut bag strainers to strain out the fruit, but let's figure out which one is which. This is a pear I know, and I think I have a pear vodka and a pear 
brandy. That's pear vodka. Maybe I only did pear vodka. I'm, I might have to go back and watch my, what I, and see what I did. I think these are both pear vodka. They smell incredible. I want to get these strained so that I can divvy them up for some Christmas gifts and we can start experimenting with making some fun cocktails. Yes, both of these are pear vodka. I just watched, so I know that. And then it's pretty easy to tell this one's gonna be apple vodka because it's much, much lighter. And this one is gonna be our apple brandy. This smells so good. Now, I got a lot of questions. Can you eat the fruit in here? I'm sure you can. I am gonna compost it. I am not gonna give this fruit to my chickens because I'm sure alcohol is probably not the best thing for them. I'm gonna take just a half gallon jar and I'm gonna put this nut bag over it. This is just a fine mesh bag. You could probably use a paper towel if you wanted for this. And I'm not going to push the fruit at all because I want it to be as clear and clean as possible. So we have one half gallon and there's probably maybe about, I don't know, maybe a cup more we can get. So this is pear vodka. It smells like candy almost, it's incredible. So now let's go ahead and do, let me make sure that this is the apple brandy one. Oh yeah, now if you remember, this was just cut up apples and brandy, that was it. I'm gonna take this fruit and dump it in here and I'm gonna compost that. I just wiped the rim of this jar. This had the apple brandy in it. I'm gonna put the apple vodka in it. I don't think it needs to be totally recleaned. So that's what this is here. So we'll get the apple vodka in here. You can see how much lighter that is. That's how I could tell which one was which. It was harder to tell with the fruit in it, but once the fruit's out, it's relatively easy. I'm gonna let that strain for just a minute. I can tell that in the pear vodka, there is a little bit more that I can strain out. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do that. Ah! Oh, we lost a little bit, that's okay. Okay, let's see if I can do the rest of this without making a complete mess. Ah! All right. Nope, I couldn't do it. I think we should just go ahead and call it and compost these pears. There's probably a little bit more I could get out of it, but I, I'm making more of a mess than I am getting, so we're just gonna put this over here and compost. These nut bags worked perfect for this. These were a gift in my P.O. box. I used them to strain broth, and they worked perfect to strain the broth to get a really nice, clear, beautiful broth. And I just threw them in my washing machine. I turned them inside out, and I washed them in my washing machine, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that again with these. Now there is gonna be no taste testing of any of this right now, but don't you worry, we will do a taste test at some point and we will make some really, really lovely cocktails. I have a cocktail, a pear cocktail on my website that we made in a live together that was incredible. So we have a half gallon of pear vodka. We have, it's probably about a quart. I probably could have put this in a quart of apple brandy. The next thing I wanna do is make raspberry. You can use any fruit. You can infuse any fruit in any alcohol you want. And the next one I wanna try is raspberry. This is apple vodka. I see all the holiday cocktails coming with this. So excited about this. So I'm just gonna put this back up where it was steeping. I'm gonna rinse it all off because now it's kind of sticky. 
because I made a huge mess and dinner is ready for the next step. I am going to turn the oven on to 400 degrees because I think I'm gonna go ahead and roast our zucchini. I'm gonna get some dishes in the dishwasher. We can wash all of our half gallon jars. Our mushrooms and onions are perfectly done. So I'm going to remove the mushrooms and onions from my cast iron because I want to brown the ground beef in this cast iron and I want to get it really nice and browned. And the mushrooms and onions are going to get in the way of that if I leave them in here. And if I had browned the beef first and then put the mushrooms and onions in this pan, I would not have gotten this nice, beautiful caramelization color on them. So it's worth this step of taking the mushrooms and onions out so that we can get a really nice good color on our ground beef. So I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil to our pan because I'm using grass fed beef. There's not a lot of fat in it, so it does need a little bit of oil to help it. I have three pounds of ground beef here. And I'm also going to turn on a pot of water to boil. So that can be boiling while we get our ground beef cooking. ground beef we're going to add salt and black pepper and we're going to let this sit here and brown really really well. While that's browning we're going to saute up or not saute up we're going to prep our veggies for the oven. We're going to put our zucchini on a cheap tray. This is our garlic infused oil we made together pepper, and some freeze-dried garlic. So I'm going to lay this out in a single layer as much as possible. And we're going to put this in the oven. Our canner only has three minutes left on it. And we are going to use some homemade egg noodles we made together a while ago at the last house. We just dried them out and we're going to have these with our stroganoff tonight. I need to salt my water still for the noodles. I don't want to touch the ground beef. I want it to cook and really, really brown on one side before I start messing with it because that's going to add a lot of flavor. I need to fill my salt container up. I keep a big 10 pound bag of salt down here so I can just refill it whenever needed. We go through a lot of salt around here. You all know this is my favorite salt, Redmond's Real Salt. I do have a discount for them. I can link down below if you're interested in them. I'm not sponsored by them, it's just the salt that I buy. I have never actually done a sponsored video before. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just haven't. I just talk about and recommend the products and ingredients and things that I use on a daily basis. Now, the reason we want to get this ground beef so nice and brown is because, let's take a look at it. It's not quite there yet. The browning is what is going to give you that really rich umami flavor. When we buy packaged foods or store-bought foods, a lot of what they use to get that really umami flavor is MSG, monosodium mono glutamate. And you can create glutamates when you're cooking at home by browning your food. Can you see how dark that is? You're not just looking to brown your meat and turn it to a brown color. You want it caramelized like that. That's what's going to give you those glutamates. That's going to give you that umami that just really, really richness that we as humans crave. And it's why the companies that create food for us add MSG because it's something that we biologically really enjoy. So you can kind of maximize your own flavor in your home kitchen by browning your meat as much as possible. So once we have that meat nice and browned, we are going to add our garlic. Now, I'm not saying MSG is good or bad. I'm just saying that 
we as humans crave that savory umami flavor and that's why it's added. And if we want to kind of create that really umami punch in our own food, browning it is gonna get us to that point. Now I'm gonna add some flour. They, I just left the oil that we used to brown the meat and the little bit of fat that came out of this meat in here to create a roux. And then we're gonna add our onions and we're gonna cook that flour with that fat. If this was conventionally raised beef that I had purchased from the grocery store, I probably would have had to strain some of the fat off. But because this is the beef that I bought from a local rancher, there's really not much fat in there. So we're gonna use all of that to make our sauce. Now that our water is boiling, I'm gonna get our homemade noodles on the stove to cook so we can enjoy those with tonight's stroganoff. And we're just gonna let that flour cook out any of the raw flavor. You do wanna be careful when you are making a roux that you don't overcook the flour because the more you cook the flour, the less thickening agent it has available. I just added probably about a cup of red wine. I did let that red wine cook down a little bit to get any of the alcohol out. And then I'm gonna add some homemade beef broth to this and I'm gonna let this thicken. Now, normally I would add sour cream to my stroganoff, but I had two blocks of cream cheese that needed to be used up. And I thought, I think I could substitute cream cheese for sour cream and it worked beautifully. I've never done that before and in a pinch I would do that again. I thought that the flavor was really good. I am gonna add a little bit of butter to our noodles just so they don't stick together. I have not taste tested this since I added the cream cheese instead of sour cream. And I even doubled down on it and I added one more block because I added the rest of the broth because I want this to be enough for three meals. Now when I say three meals for Josh and I, that means we get dinner and then we have enough for leftovers for lunches or maybe dinner or two. So I need to add, let's taste it first. That's delicious. That's absolutely delicious with the cream cheese instead of sour cream. So I'm totally happy that I did that. Now I'm gonna add probably about a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. I love Worcestershire sauce. It adds that umami flavor, a little bit of sweetness. We're gonna mix that in and then it does need, I can already tell, it doesn't need any more salt, but it does need a little bit more pepper. We love, 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 love pepper with our stroganoff. Get that stirred in and then we need to give a taste test. And <laughs> Instead of going through a million spoons to do taste testing, you all gave me the best recommendation. You only need two spoons. One spoon you dip and you put on the spoon you taste. And that way I don't have to get a billion spoons out every time I need to do more than one or two taste tests. Mm. Stroganoff, just it is my absolute favorite. I love it. It is really good with this uh, ground beef. Like I said, I usually make stroganoff with like truck roast, but this is fantastic. This is done. I'm gonna turn this off. Our canner is done. I'm just waiting for it to cool and I can take those jars out of the canner. Josh is really hungry, so I'm gonna dish up his dinner. So I am gonna put a little dollop of sour cream on the top. We always like fresh pepper on the top of our stroganoff. And it looks like this is the second time this has happened. The oven keeps getting turned off. I think my bell like, keeps pushing the buttons. But it looks like our zucchini, zucchini did get roasted, even though I kept pushing the button. So this is what it's looking like. Not perfect, but let's give it a taste test. Mmm. Tastes fantastic. So I'll just put a little bit on Josh's side of the bowl. We don't mind if our food touches. I know that that bothers some people. But I'm gonna go bring this to Josh. This was so fun. We got a bunch of projects wrapped up. We got two dinners ready to go for the freezer. Once that cool, I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. We have dinner tonight plus a few lunches. We got our canner done. As soon as that cools, I'll take those cans out of that canner. We got three brownie mixes, three 
cornbreads and the vodka and pear strained along with the apple brandy. So super, super productive getting all of these little things wrapped up. I'm just trying to check a bunch of this stuff off the list so that I don't have these things hanging over me and we can just go into having this baby and being able to focus on that once this happens or once that happens. Hopefully, well, it will be within the next week. I'm guaranteeing it's gonna be within the next week. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen. I greatly appreciate you. I just wanna say thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. I hope this was encouraging. If you enjoyed this and you wanna watch more of my videos between now and my next upload, I'll pop some up here you can go enjoy. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.